federal government, whatever information the federal government has on cyber threats, is it being pushed in the other direction to make sure that private sector has all the information they that we know about a particular threat so that they can protect themselves? You know, these are these are where I think the conversation needs to need to be going into the future. National data breach standards. What does that look like? Is it important? You know, there, there's a, there's a lot of questions once we get past this first hurdle. But making sure everyone is sharing information on threats, on attacks, um, is is critical. Do you are the um, I'm going to try to back into this question. I was writing a story recently about the Obama administration's outreach to tech companies. How I referenced it before, they, they, there's these constant um, calls to do more. And there's not a whole lot of articulation of what more is. I reached out to some of the smaller companies, WhatsApp, some of the ones that were new to me as a fairly old person. Um, and they said, we haven't heard from the administration. Um, we haven't he really heard um, from anyone. And I asked the Homeland Security Committee. They said, no, we haven't gotten around to asking them to sit down at the table. And we're months into this. Are there mechanisms in Congress for you to have these conversations? I mean, we have committee, we've always had committee hearings. We've always had some, you know, more informal interactions between staff. How do you actually have those conversations? Does that make sense? No, it, look, it, it makes complete sense. I, I, I think it's, one, you got to make this an issue that's important to you, right? Um, you have the, the round table situation where you bring in people from an industry and you talk about a particular topic, and, and we do that quite frequently. And one, in order to understand what's really going on out there, but I, I think part of what needs to happen is you got to get all these people in the right place to have a back and forth conversation um, so that we can get to what is the problem and what are the solutions, and you need to get the right players in there. So part of that is if you articulate, okay, here's a problem, and here, here are the things that bad guys are using, let's get those people that are, that are part, uh, you know, that run those things and say, hey, how can we solve this problem in, in a creative way? Um, and, and that is getting everyone in the same room to have a conversation um, is not always the first step in Washington, D.C. And um, so part of that is these conversations. Um, you know, this is, this is one thing that um, Mike McCall, uh, Chairman McCall of Homeland Security, with his um, <clears throat> idea of a commission, is to get all the right actors in the room to talk about these uh, challenges, and then how can, we, how can we solve some of those problems? And, and doing it in a structured environment and making sure you have the right people there to have those conversations. But you know, more is less in this situation. You're going to see more hearings on, on these topics from a variety of, of committees. And you know, the term I've learned, I've heard more in my last 11 months than I have in my previous 38 years is jurisdiction. <laughs> um, and it's just like, oh my God, it's like, it's like every committee has some jurisdictional piece over something. And sometimes, you know, the elbows come out. So that, that's a challenge of this issue. So, so the, those kinds of conversations aren't being had enough. And, and the other thing is understanding the problem and, and articulating that in the right form, in the right forum um, is important too. Okay, excellent. So the, uh, there was a debate that grew out of the debate the other night between Senators Rubio and Cruz about the USA Freedom Act, about whether that's limiting the ability of government to collect the information that might have been useful in the context of the San Bernardino. Or shooting, sir. Team Rubio or Team Cruz? Could be simple, but. Well, I'm Team Heard always. Um, and 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 look, I, I supported the USA Freedom Act. I think it was a I think it was a good piece of legislation that did what I said at the beginning. It made sure we further protections on 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 civil liberties. Um, it it and also ensured that there's tools for law enforcement um, to do their to do their job and. So, you know, it, it's always easy to Monday morning quarterback, right, and try to create a picture in the past, uh, but that leads to, okay, are we gonna keep every piece of information that was ever created in some database so we can recreate past history? I don't think anybody is, is, is supportive of that. So um, this is gonna continually be, be a conversation and a debate, and, and when I tell my friends that are still in the intelligence community, um, you know, whether or not something was legal, if 46% of Americans are distrustful of something, as a warfighter, that's not where you want to be, right? And, and so I think the USA Freedom Act was a, was a good thing. 
um, and I think it's, it's it's something that's going to be you know key for us um, going forward. But you know this is this is a debate that is only going to heat up. I, I think it's going to be an important issue over over the twenty in twenty sixteen. Not only here, but I think on the campaign trail. I think it's great to have organizations like this having a conversation. It's great having you know folks in the media that understand this and shining a light. Um, on these issues, because that's how we're going to solve this uh, to make sure we keep America one of the greatest you know, countries on the planet. And I'm getting, um, I'm at my staffers yeah. is mean mugging me right now. <laughs> I'm so seeing, I'm um, seeing it too. I'm trying yeah. To so so uh, we, that means we got to get um, we got to get to hearings. But but I, I appreciate the conversation and and, and to y'all to our real, street. Thank you. Real quickly, thanks again so much, uh, Congressman. Uh, hurry, sorry, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Um, <laughs> Congressman Griffith, for being here, we enjoyed it. Um, but um, point of privilege, host, and one question. Sure. <laughs> Sorry, we can't do a full Q and A, and we will hopefully have more conversation uh, as this continues on. But question: Beard or no beard for the speaker? <laughs> and uh, would you like to make a statement on that? That's actually a depressing <laughs> issue. Right you know, it, it really is. Um, uh, you know, I. I you know, whatever whatever makes him happy, and he seems to be, you know, he seems to be doing a good job. And if that's because of the beard, you know, look, it worked for James Harden, you know, so it may work for it may work for him. So, so X, I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. Can I add you're walking out a 10 second question? Yeah. Homeland, what scale one to 10? How accurate? You can make it on. So, 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 I, you know, so, so, I, I'm, I got that question a lot, and and I watched the first. Uh, four or five episodes of the first season and it's a great drama good acting but it, it really is nowhere close nope. to reality oh. but I will say this <laughs> there, there is one scene there is one scene in uh, I forget which episode Saul is that the guy the yeah. guy with the beard yeah. or he had a beard in the first season yeah um, he flies to Mexico to pick up the wife of of a suspected terrorist and drives her back to like Washington DC and doesn't say a word like the whole time and then they sit and have breakfast and she spills the beans like that actually happens sometimes when <laughs> as as a as a negotiating or um, a, a way to elicit information but but um, one movie that I think is really accurate um, the one with Ben Affleck um, in uh, uh, Ar uh, Argo yeah Argo Argo is kind of like that whole scenario is a is a um, what's it called a um, a case you learn when you like when you're in the CIA they they teach you about it and it's pretty accurate and and Zero Dark Thirty um, you know there's a lot there's some pieces that are completely taken out of context and the first half of the movie is kind of an amalgamation of a lot of stuff mm -hmm. um, there's some pieces. Uh, especially on the enhanced interrogation, that's not an accurate, reflective. But the end is pretty is pretty accurate on, on how things on how things happen. So um, so so yeah. But but Homeland, sorry. Uh, <laughs> Good yeah. to know. Good to see you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is it are people rushing off? Or? Do we have a couple more minutes, or how are we doing? We like to continue the conversation for a few more minutes. So if it's all right, um, Nancy, are you able to chat with Mike Godwin, yeah, our sure. director sure. of innovation policy? For sure. This is the chance where our street gets to talk about our branding and kind of what we're working on the policy issues. And Nancy, in a journalistic could, way, and in a journalistic <laughs> way. So if, Mike, if you can come on sure. up, great. Thank you. Good to see. So I have an easy first question. The congressman sure. disagreed with your position on cybersecurity provisions. And legislation so why sure. is he wrong uh, he's wrong sorry <laughs> uh, I, I think that here's here's the way I think about it in for a long time in uh, the federal code already in title 18 section 2702 service providers already have the authority to voluntarily disclose information when they think their subscribers are creating some imminent danger it's already there. So the question is, what is it that we need to share beyond that? And if the answer is that we want to turn service providers into sort of ongoing cops on the beat, that's an interesting idea, but that is not normally the subscriber relationship to uh, Google or Yahoo or Facebook 
or Twitter. You don't normally try to create the relationship with those entities where they're monitoring you and if you say something that triggers their suspicion, then they voluntarily send that information to Homeland Security and put your information in the hands of the well-meaning Department of Homeland Security. That's really not the relationship that you expect to have. And what's more, these platforms are international platforms. Mm -hmm. And they're competing in the international marketplace. And the question is, do we really want to communicate uh, that these great uh, engines of innovation that we have in the United States that have been hugely profitable for us and for the rest of the world uh, that we want to communicate that there is a fundamental duty for them to snoop on us if we're acting suspiciously. So if you did you get a chance to watch the Republican debate on the... I, I watched uh, some of it. Okay. So it was a huge chunk of it was about technology, tech policy. I, and if just the yeah. if you're running down the Republican candidates in the, the R Street's positions, your positions on these things, there's not a ton of overlap between those two. How does as somebody working in Washington in sort of a conservative libertarian way, what does it look like to see your the leading candidates in your party espousing completely different positions? Well, I you know, I I, I would say first of all, it's it's America's party and as I said, the Democrats, it's not really our party. Our street has a position about a lot of issues and sometimes we find that people in different parties mm -hmm. represent those positions pretty well. I think that um, it, it, I, well, what I hope will happen, because we're not even in the election year yet, is that the candidates who do, do go through the primary process have an evolving position on technology, because right now it's sort of unevolved. Um, and I understand why. I mean, I think there's a, you know, among some candidates there's an immense amount of optimism about American technological know-how, and the presumption is that if law enforcement or national security has a certain set of uh, requirements or wishes that some that